Hey guys, welcome to Amity Tracks. It is time. Let's look at 1973. What's going on in 73? Well, Richard Nixon is still your president. Although you have a kind of a shakeup in the Nixon administration, Vice President Spiro Agnew is forced to resign in disgrace due to a bribery scandal. But I'm sure that's the worst the Nixon administration is going to have to deal with, right? Well, we'll see. Elvis Presley, his concert is broadcast via satellite from Hawaii, the big television event. The Supreme Court issues the uh, decision in Roe versus Wade. It's been in the news a little bit recently. You also have the end of U.S. troop involvement in the Vietnam War. This is very important. The Sting wins Best Picture that year. The World Trade Center opens up in New York City. You have the Summer Jam at Watkins Glen, one of the biggest music festivals ever. <laughs> and what was it? The Grateful Dead, the Allman Brothers, and the band all headlined there. And finally, Bruce Lee dies suddenly, shockingly, in 1973. All right. Great year for music. I mean, you know, we, I, uh, I keep saying that, right? But the, the you know, early 70s, man, it's good stuff. Let's kind of go through quickly. I'll try and go through quick. Some honorable mentions here before we get into what I consider at least my top 10 for 1973. Grab these here. All right. Honorable mentions. Let's start with one that's a little bit out there, a little strange. We have the first collaboration between Robert Fripp of King Crimson, of course, and Brian Eno with No Pussyfooting. Great album title. Uh, just two tracks, one on each side. I think the Heavenly Music Corporation, the one on side one, is, is pretty awesome. Got this great effects, great treatments on the, that guitar. But anyway, brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Let's kind of stay out there. You've got Can with Future Days. Another sort of landmark and more kind of experimental music. So somewhat ambient, but a little bit more than that. We have Bob Marley and the Whalers. Catch a fire. Now, I, I do prefer... The other album cover, the one with the, the the lighter, you know, you can open up the anyway. But this is this is what I have. Awesome, you know, obviously one of the early ones, and I think one where, you know, some of the other guys like you know Peter Tosh, Bunny Livingston, some of his other guys do have a larger role. I don't know if I want. It's not an equal collaboration, really. Bob Marley's still obviously up front and center, but. But I, I think it's kind of cool where you have some of those other guys uh, that have kind of a larger role in here. It makes it feel more like a group album versus just Bob Marley, right? Have the debut from Leonard Skinner, pronounced Leonard Skinner. I think a, not a great album title. Now, I do apologize. This This album cover looks pretty beaten up, but take a look. I got this for $1.99 from wherever. I don't remember where I bought it. The vinyl is actually in really good shape. Just the cover's a little beaten up. But man, I ain't the one. Tuesday's gone. Beautiful. Give me three steps. Simple man. Also beautiful. And a little song called Freebird. <laughs> it's, it's a hell of a debut, isn't it? One of the landmarks in fusion and jazz fusion, Herbie Hancock's Headhunters. This sold a ton of copies, especially for a jazz record in the 70s with the 15-minute the chameleon on there, right? Just awesome stuff. Look at those guys. That's pretty cool. Neil Young, Time Fades Away. A live album, but a live album of all new material. And I, I really like this album a lot. The, you know, my, I guess my, 
like it's a used copy I found somewhere. My my cover is a bit battered, but I think appropriate for because this is this is sort of a raggedy record, but it's awesome. It's awesome. The Who puts out Quadrophenia. Way back, I did a I did a Who video, one of our earliest videos, where I I think talk at length about this. So if you want to hear a discussion about Quadrophenia, you can go there and see where I put it in the overall Who rankings. But here it is. The Beach Boys put out what to me is their last really good album, Holland. I think Holland is fantastic. This is actually coming out in a reissue set soon. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But really, there's two songs on here that I think really stand out. Sail on Sailor, great single. But The Traitor, just one of those Carl Wilson, such a great Carl Wilson song. I love that song. This whole record, I kind of dig. Band on the Run, Paul McCartney and Wings. Down to basically a trio, right? <laughs> uh, I, I think, on, I'm going to be honest with you, I think about half of this is great. The title track, probably my favorite solo song of his. Would have been a killer Beatles song. With those you know, the multiple sections in there. So good. Probably the most commercial, I don't know, commercial uh, record from Dr. John in the right place. Some great album art there. I always open it up. Pretty cool images there. In the right place, you've got what, right place, wrong time, uh, travel and mood, such a night. Yeah, pretty awesome, awesome stuff. Again, very commercial. And then finally, in the honorable mentions, before we get to the top ten, got the Almond Brothers, Brothers and Sisters. I did an Almond Brothers video too a while back. If you want to dive into this, I think this is the last really great Almond Brothers album for a while. Yeah, they're going to hit kind of a a rough a rough patch for for quite a while here. Let's get to the top ten though. Top 10 for 1973. At number 10, I have David Bowie's Aladdin Sane. There we go. Aladdin Sane. Uh, referred to sometimes as Ziggy Goes to America because he, he wrote a lot of this while he was on the road in America. You look at some of the song titles here. You know, uh, Drive In Saturday, Panic in Detroit. Yeah, man, was a cracked yeah cracked actor that that crunchy guitar at the beginning of Cracked Actor is just awesome. For me, the highlight though is the title track Aladdin Sane. Um, oh, what's the guy? This is a. This, I'm just looking. Ah, I can't see it on there. It's making me angry. The piano player. Great, great piano player on there. Editor can throw his name up there. That's that iconic piano solo that is just all over the place. But, I mean, still kind of jaw-dropping to me on that title track. Gershon. I just can't remember. Yeah, the last name. I just can't remember the first name. Great, great record. Yeah, kind of a companion piece to Ziggy Stardust, I think. But, you know, stands on its own as well. Number nine. Number nine, I have a live album. It's Traffic on the Road. This might be kind of a sleeper. You know, some of you guys might not be familiar with this record as much. This is sort of late period Traffic. It's, uh, like I said, a live album. Really, 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 the, the only songs they play is stuff off uh, Low, Spark on High Heel, Low Spark of High Heel Boys and Shoot Out at the Fantasy Factory. It's just tracks off of those two records. In fact, there's only four tracks on here. Now, there was an expanded edition I have on CD, which actually I don't think is as good. It, it, it kind of dilutes it a bit. There's a really long, glad 20-minute like version, which to me kind of drags on that expanded edition. But here it's just tight. You got four tracks. Great expanded version of uh, Low Spark of High Heel Boys, 15-minute version of that, where they really stretch out. 
Light Up or Leave Me Alone is the other track off a of high, uh, low spark. And then the two tracks off of uh, Shoot Out at the Fantasy Factory are the title track. And sometimes I feel so uninspired, which to me are like the two only really good songs off of that album. But all these songs are expanded. They jam out. Steve Winwood is in top form, especially on guitar. And he just solos so well on there. There's, there's Winwood on the guitar. So yes, this this is this this is really really good. For the jazz fusiony almost. All right. Number eight, one of the great progressive rock albums of all time, Genesis, Selling England by the Pound. The, the middle record in what I think is just an amazing trilogy of albums from Genesis. You know, this, of course, is you know, the Peter Gabriel era. Um, opening with Dancing with the moon, Moonlit Night. I know what I like, which was the closest thing the Gabriel era Genesis came to kind of a radio single. It's really good. Birth of Fifth. Wow. That the guitar from Steve Hackett on that, that kind of extended, you know, last section of that song is just phenomenal. Cinema show. One of the great progressive rock records. So at number seven. We have the second record from Roxy Music. There they are. For your pleasure. Always great uh, album art <laughs> from Roxy Music. Now, th this is the, I, I think the story of this record is, you know, the clash of the Bryans, right? Brian Ferry and Brian Eno. This is the, the last, you know, Brian Eno was only in the band for those first two records. This is the second one. He would leave due to creative differences. But I think what makes this record intriguing in a lot of ways, I, you know, they made great records after Eno left. You, you will see them in some you know, in the next years coming up. But what makes this record, I think, unique and intriguing is, is that, that creative tension between Brian Ferry, I think, trying to take the group into more kind of mainstream commercial uh you know, path and, and Eno with, you know, being Brian Eno, <laughs> right. You know, so, so you have, you know, you've got do the strand beauty queen editions of you, these great, great songs, kind of more straight ahead songs, but then, you know, you got something like the bogus man, right. Which uh, has all these amazing, Eno treatments. And I, I know, I know people are split on the bogus man. I, I think the bogus man is, Fantastic, though. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Number six. We have Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy, which sometimes on YouTube, people get tagged for showing this album cover, so we do have to censor part of it. Whatever. I'm not a big fan of the album cover anyway, but love the album. <laughs> I think one of their more eclectic records you got stuff all the way from, you know, like the rain song, then going into, you know, the ocean, which is awesome. Dancing days, which really works. Uh, Jamaica, I don't know if that quite works. They're sort of <laughs> leaden attempt at, at, at reggae. Uh, I don't know. Some people, a lot of people like that song. To me, though, the, the highlight is definitely over the hills and far away. Yeah, I, I know that song has shown up on Zeppelin compilations. But I still don't think it gets uh, enough attention and appreciation. I, I, I think that song is a brilliant hybrid of you know, kind of folk and hard rock. So yeah, Led Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy. At number five, I think we have one of the more, I think, challenging, at least in the mainstream, progressive rock albums, but well worth it. Incredible. Talking about King Crimson's Lark's Tongues and Aspic. You know, in my view, the I, I guess the the beginning of that sort of second phase of King Crimson, where you have that core trio, you know, Robert Fripp and John Wetton and uh, Bill Bruford, right? And then on this one, you also have David Cross and Jamie Muir. Muir would leave, and then 
after the next album, David Cross officially leaves, and then you know, then you're down to the trio, and then and they break up and come back together later. But uh, but so the beginning of this second phase, I don't know if I've heard any record with such dramatic dynamics, just in in sound and recording. You know, from just a whisper to just you know crashing into you, yeah, and. The complexity of these these compositions, you know, especially Lark's Tongues and Aspic, you know, part one and then part two, just awesome. I saw Crimson 2017 live, and they opened with Lark's Tongues and Aspic part one, and I was just in, in heaven. I was in paradise. It was so good. But Exiles is great. Easy Money is a classic Crimson tune. The talking drum is cool, how that a slow, real slow fade in, and then uh, you know goes into Lark's Tongue and Aspic part two. Just... If you want great, challenging progressive rock, hard to beat that. All right, coming in at number four. I told you guys that you know, when I, I think I featured their their debut before. You know, you'll, you'll be seeing their albums here: Steely Dan's "Countdown to Ecstasy." You know, when they were still kind of a band and not just you know Donald Fagan and Walter Becker and then killer session guys they were i think they were still putting themselves out there as a full band here at this point but man i mean my favorite track on here is your gold teeth when the, when the band really stretches out on that song but i mean you got bodhisattva showbiz kids my old school razor boy yeah, it's just, just impeccable tight steely dan record all right top three now the two of these three I have already talked about in previous videos, so I'll, I won't go too long on these. But at number three, I do have, I think, the definitive 70s ZZ Top album, Tres Hombres. If you want to know the great, well, the greatness of this trio, but really the greatness of Billy Gibbons on guitar, right here, man. I, I mean, the album art here in the middle here just says it all that beautiful greasy plates of awesome tex-mex food that this is the music here in um i mean waiting for the bus and jesus just left chicago there's two great songs that always go together you know join beer drinkers hell raisers master of sparks lagrange of course is on here uh, there's not a bad there's not a bum track on here this this is this is just i mean Blues influenced rock at the highest order, right here. Number two for 73 should be number one. If I were doing some sort of objective list, yes, this would be number one. My, you know, this is a personal list, yeah, as all these are, right? You know, so my number one uh, on this list, I, 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 I can't have anywhere else but number one, but. This one, you know, objectively should be. And, uh, you know, what am I talking about? Of course, I'm talking about uh, the cat. My cat is tearing up my Neil Young poster. Hang on. Get over there. This guy right here was tearing up my Neil Young poster. Out. You take them in, you take care of them, and what? how do they repay you, right? Where was I? Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon was where I was. Probably the most cohesive record ever. I don't know. I, I mean, what do you say about Dark Side of the Moon? I'll say a lot, because not here, but I'm going to do a Pink Floyd you know, ranking soon. I, actually, I, I recorded one a long time ago, but... It was early in this channel's history, and I think I can do a much better job now. I think I've gotten better at this. So I'm probably going to redo it. But we will do a Pink Floyd video sometime soon. Obviously, this will be discussed, but, I mean, that. But just for me, my number one for 1973 has got to be Springsteen's, Bruce Springsteen's The Wild, The Innocent, and The East Street Shuffle, his second record. Now, we just finished Springsteen Week here on this channel, so 
you've gotten your fill of Springsteen. <laughs> I don't need to go too much into this, but just briefly, in case you skip those videos, um, this is his second record. I think this this lineup of the E Street Band is key because these two guys here, Vinny Lopez and then David Sanchez, this is their last record before they're out of this band. But I think they really add kind of a jazzier element. And, and, and this, this record captures more than any other studio record the excitement, I think, of live Springsteen. And so, yeah. I, 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 you know, live Springsteen in those early days, you know, those side two is just perfect on here. The three epics in a row incident on 57th street, Rosalita, New York city serenade is for me. This is in my top 10 favorite albums of all time. This is just a perfect record for me. Well, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. It really does help us out. Helps us do what we want to get done here. And, uh, uh, like the videos, hit the bell for notifications, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time.